beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the Word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Bless his name. Bless his name. God is worthy of praise. Bless your holy name. I sing your praises forever. And I forget not. Your benefits. I bless your holy name. I sing your praise is forever. And I forget not your benefits. I will never forget. I will not forget, Lord. Your benefits. How can I forget? How can I forget? I will never forget. I will not forget, Lord. I will not forget. I will not forget, Lord. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to say thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Go ahead and bless him. You must have a reason to give him praise. You must have a reason because he is faithful. Lord, you have been faithful. The psalmist said, if the Lord had not been on my side, now may Israel sing. That if the Lord had not been by my side. Lord, we thank you for your deliverance, for your grace, for your faithfulness. For your mercies. Bless him for his faithfulness. Lord, we give you all the praise. Tonight we express our gratitude for your faithfulness, for your bountiful blessings, for the miracles, for the signs, for the wonders, for the power of your word. We give you praise. Come on, bless him in the spirit. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, holy. 
that is he who comes in the name of Hosanna, 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 yeah. Hosanna, Hosanna, yeah. Who comes in the name of Hosanna, 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 yeah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. For thou art worthy, O God. To open the book and unlock the scrolls, for thou wast slain, and with your blood you have purchased men out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation, and you have made us a people. We bless the one who was dead and now is alive. And holds the keys. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Every time we appear before his presence, it is important that we cultivate the attitude of worship and of expressing our gratitude. Sammy said. If the Lord has not been on our side, now may Israel say, Hallelujah. God has been faithful in the midst of all the chaos and the deaths and the lamentations around. He has preserved us. Believers must learn that it is an act of worship to give thanks. Bible says in Psalm 100, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. He said, come before him with singing. Hallelujah. It's important that we open up our hearts and express our gratitude. Let me tell you something. Every time you cease to see the relevance of God in your life, all he does is to take a step out of your life. And you will see the chaos that your life will become without him. Hallelujah. I am ever conscious of his presence. I realize that he designed us to be inadequate without him. And forever we are eternally grateful. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Please take on your Bibles. First and foremost, just walk to two or three people. Appreciate them. Walk up to two or three people. Just bless them. Give them a good hug. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Father, we give you praise. Romans chapter 8. Tonight the Lord is going to be provoking us. Hallelujah. Bible says provoke one another to godliness. God is going to be challenging us. Our goal in this place is to build us, to equip ourselves, hallelujah, to prepare the army of the Lord, the generals who will take charge. We are raising a takeover generation, a generation of men and women who understand their king, understand his ways, and understand his power. Hallelujah. Bible says saviors shall come out of Zion and that they shall judge the mount of Esau God is depending on us and upon our generation 
Bible says in Romans chapter 8 from verse 18, it says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not compared, it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Verse 19 says, for the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Some version says that creation is waiting for the day and the time when God will reveal who his sons truly are. Hallelujah. Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. He said, Now are we the sons and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Hallelujah. And so tonight, God is going to challenge us. It is our desire that we come to a point where we truly understand god's ways and his life and his power and his grace for it is out of the abundance of this revelation that we'll be able to rule and to reign hallelujah romans chapter 8 lord let your word come with fire in our spirits let your word challenge us and equip us in the name of jesus hallelujah romans chapter 8 Please bring out your Bibles, your writing materials. Verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba Father. It says, The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. Verse 17. Let's read together. One to read. The A part is my point of emphasis tonight. It says, and if children, then heirs. It says, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Tonight I want to give us a revelation of what it means to be a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. For many believers, the concept of being one, the concept of our oneness with Christ. I hope you realize that the whole goal of eternal life and the coming of the spirit in our life is first and foremost to bring us into oneness hallelujah the church is called the bride of christ and according to the book of genesis when god was speaking instituting marriage he told adam he says wherefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they too shall become what one flesh they too coming from different locations in this holy matrimony they become one flesh and now the bible is saying that the holy spirit comes to live in us as a testimony that god has agreed to bring us into oneness and the bible says if this statement is true then it means he tells us from verse 17 it says and if children in other words if god didn't lie if it is true that God is saying that he has brought us into oneness, then it means that we are heirs. Hallelujah. It says heirs of God and joint heirs. Joint heirs with Christ. I pray that your eyes will be open tonight to understand the power and the revelation behind not only being one with Christ, but being a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. The book of Esther, don't turn there. It's a prophetic book that reveals to us the power and the transition of the church of Christ. Coming into that point where we sit with the king. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand that we were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. This is the prophetic type of Esther, Hadassah. The Bible says she was cut off from the people. She was a slave girl in the countryside. And then the Bible says how that when King Ahasuerus banished Vashti as queen, the Bible says certain people were called. And Esther from nowhere came into a point where she was given the royal crown, the signet ring, instantly she came into honor and the bible says that she was made to sit with the king hallelujah 
and at that point she had power and authority you need to realize the implication of what it means to be a christian for many of us being a christian it's just i know that we have taught about vision and purpose and all of these things but it is important for us to understand the supernatural dimension and the implication of being a christian hallelujah being a christian is not just one of the many religions we have on the earth the implication of being a christian is first and foremost that you have come into oneness say after me oneness oneness when you come into oneness the bible says in genesis chapter 11 talking about nimrod and the tower of babel it says that god looked down and saw that the people although there were many he said the people is one he didn't say are one it may be grammatically wrong but it's spiritually correct he said the people he saw that they were one hallelujah therein lies the revelation of the victory and the authority of the believer that you realize that when you come into christ there is a literal translation first and foremost from the kingdom of darkness the bible says into the kingdom of god's dear son and then he calls the holy spirit the spirit of adoption the one who is able to call different sons what does it mean to adopt to adopt means to pick someone who was not originally yours by hallelujah and bring the person to a point where he becomes a literal benefactor of your benevolence or whatever you have to a point that you can say this is an adopted child you give the child the exact same benefit the bible calls the holy spirit the spirit of adoption the one who is able to adopt the saint and bring him into that point where you are qualified by his grace and by the righteousness of Christ to be an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. Hallelujah. I've always given this example, but then let me use it again. Please, someone from come. Hallelujah. Now, all of you watch this. Assuming I own a company. Are you listening to me? I want to show you the revelation of oneness and what it means for us to come into oneness and to be joint heirs with Christ. Assuming I own a company and let's assume that Tosin is a cleaner in that company. Are you following me now? Is a cleaner just sweeping everywhere. And I decide to get married to her. Watch this. The moment are you listening to me? The exact moment the pronunciation is made by the pastor that I hereby declare you husband and wife. Listen, the implication is that in the realm of the spirit, God ceases to see two of us as two people. We become joined. Are you listening to me? In theology, we call it the doctrine of interpenetration. The mystery of two people, two separate entities becoming one. This is why the church is called the bride that comes into oneness with christ the church is the eve of adam are you listening to me just like follow me please in the book of genesis the bible makes us to understand that adam came into the scene and eve was there are you following me now the goal the authority everything was vested upon adam but the bible makes us to understand that when satan wanted to get that authority from adam he came through eve are you following me now Eve was the pride and the glory of Adam because she was cut out from him. Hallelujah. And the Bible makes us to understand in the New Testament that Christ has now become that second Adam. Are you listening to me? Now the Eve that belongs to that Adam is no longer a singular person. is a body. The bride of Christ. We have now become the Eve of this second Adam. Are you following me now? so that we are supposed to be joined the exact same way adam was joined to eve and so you see satan is using the same strategy in genesis wanting to get adam he came through eve this is why satan is hunting the church who is the bride the eve of this adam hallelujah but then it is important for us to understand the implication of being the bride of christ 
instantly Tosin becomes a partaker of everything I own. She begins to bear my name. Are you following me now? Now watch this. Whether you like her or not is not the issue. There is a present day reality. Are you listening to me? She can tell the driver, please take me somewhere. And the driver will say, you, you, Tosin. And somebody will say, stop calling her Tosin. She's no longer Tosin. Now watch this. If Tosin does not know that revelation, and there is a bully who has been troubling her before the marriage, are you listening to me? The bully can look at her and say, if you like, become August's wife. That's your cup of tea. You are going to sweep this place. What happens? Although it is a present, I have never denied that she's my wife. But she will keep sweeping as though we are not married. Are you listening to me? She will keep sweeping and her words will not have power. Because she has not understood the implication of being my wife. Are you following me now? If for some reason I get to find out. And she suddenly comes into that revelation. That come. I have the right and the power to suck you out of this company and to bring you and if you reject and do not stand by my words the one who made me his wife it will now be his responsibility to prove whether he lied by telling me i'm his wife or not so the defense is not your job are you listening to me the defense for it has god designed a man to protect a woman is that correct a man is supposed to defend so if the woman speaks on behalf of the man and anyone that contends with that statement the man is supposed to come in this is how god designed and so if she talks to that man and says do not harass me listen the fact that i'm married to her does not change the bully automatically he will keep being a bully he will test her understanding of the implication of what it means to come into this new position now she's used to sweeping she's not used to somebody driving her in a jeep are you listening to me and calling her good morning ma so sometimes her mindset can make her so humble she say let me just take this broom and help you but whether or not she chooses that that is not the present reality according to the agreement now when she comes into an understanding one day she will take the marriage certificate and come and summon all the workers and say by the terms that are in this certificate that i'm showing you it has been written here can you see my name signed here are you following me now and the moment she's speaking i will come and stand by her side and said i hope you are hearing from that moment listen from that moment it has not only been that now watch this two scenes here number one it is true that i'm married to her but she's still suffering are you following me now she's still suffering does that change the fact that i'm faithful are you listening to me marriage is the best description of our oneness and the implication of what it means to be joint heirs joint heirs are you following me now now the difference between a co-heir and a joint heir is this let me have another person yes please if the music director is my business associate we are not joint heirs are you following me now we are called co-heirs because if we need capital to start a project hallelujah assuming we need one million naira i can bring six hundred thousand and he brings how much four hundred thousand are you following me now our profit is shared according to our contribution are you following me now that means the day he decides to get angry we're in trouble are you following me now so but in this case she didn't do anything she only told me yes are you following me now and everything i have instantly belongs to her there is a difference between being a joint heir and a co-heir there are many believers that are trying to be co-heirs with god the bible never calls us co-heirs with christ don't be so spiritual that you argue the reality of what is in the word of god it was inspired by the spirit a joint heir is number one one who has come into oneness oneness with christ oneness with christ that means you possess his life the life of god is in you are you listening to me 
you must understand the power and the implication of having what we call eternal life. Eternal life is not the life you will have when you get to heaven. No, that's not eternal life. Eternal life is God's life supplanting your biological life literally so that you begin to exist with another dimension of life. It's a supernatural life. Higher than all the limits in this realm. Either God is lying or you believe it. The implication of being one with Christ is first and foremost that we are partakers of his divine nature not partakers of his nature there is a reason why the bible says that nature is divine partakers of his divine nature hallelujah that means we are connected watch this we are connected every time christ is honored if it is true that we are one the church must be honored that's why every time you praise God, you also receive a portion of that blessing. Every time you truly praise and worship God and nothing happens to you, then it, it means God has lied. You see the power of praise and worship. Because whatever is happening to him must also happen to you. This is the implication of being one. The, the Israelites understood this. He said, touch them not, they are the apple of my eyes. Hallelujah. Do you realize the implication of being one with Christ? Watch this. I am one with Tosin. When we go to the market, we are going together. Are you listening to me? Every time anybody wants to speak evil against me, hallelujah, assuming I am somewhere and she's not there, if I hear you talking about her, what, what do you expect me to do? Just smile and say, wow, you are a very smart person. I live to promote her interest in her own realm whenever she hears you saying anything about me because we are one are you following me now the concept of oneness does not mean you are in the same location necessarily that you have been joined in life in purpose in vision are you listening to me her pain becomes my pain her joy becomes my joy her vision becomes my vision do you understand the implication of being a joint heir with Christ hallelujah that means if jesus is righteous i am righteous oh yes whether i feel like it or not it, either god is lying it's a present day reality accept it this is the truth in christ so every time i stand before principalities and powers the first revelation in the realm of the spirit is the one to find out whether you are in Christ or not. Outside of Christ, you do not have a platform to do anything. Are you listening to me? The basis for everything in the spirit is that you are in Christ. In Christ. Outside of Christ, you do not have a say. You do not have a platform. So in Christ, when I speak to a sick body, and I command that cancer to leave. What they are saying, I'm speaking on behalf of the authority and the government of heaven. Are you listening to me? If the person does not get healed, are you listening to me? It's left for the one I'm representing to validate his reputation because it's at stake there. Are you listening to me? And so the Bible says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it says, I fear no evil. Why? For thou, who is the thou? Thou art with me. It says, if it is true that we are children, that we have been adopted, called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation, then we are heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. Partakers of his divine life. Partakers of his divine life. What is the life of God? What is it? What is the divine life of God? Let me tell you what the divine life of God is. The divine life of God is everything that makes him God. Everything. Every attribute that can be found. 
Because Christ is the express image of God. So whatever, Christ came to give us a sample of everything that can be found in the Father. Hallelujah. And so Christ is the expression. The Bible calls him the express image of the Father. What does that mean? That means that if it is true that the life of God is in us, then Christ becomes our standard. That everything that flowed through Christ, his glory, his power, his grace, should find expression in us. Sons of adoption. So if I speak in the realm of the spirit and my words have no implication, then it means my oneness has a problem in the realm of the spirit. It means it has not been established and it has not been recognized. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now watch this. Before we got married, she had her ideologies and her limitations. Watch this. When we get married and I'm the man and she's the woman, who submits to who? What does it mean to submit? To bring your strength and your value system and everything to conformity. Are you listening to me? That, that becomes the basis. Because although I am married to her, she can choose to take her mindset of being a sweeper. It doesn't change the fact that I'm her husband. But she's going to suffer the consequence. And by implication, it's going to affect me. Do you understand? So the Bible says, this is God's present day reality. Now come into alignment. That's what we call the renewing of the mind. Coming into alignment with God's perspective about you. And God's reality about you. Let me tell you what God has to say about his bride. Hebrews chapter 2. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 5. Are you there? God's purpose. Hmm. I want to show you what it means. To be a joint heir with Christ. We are examining the implications. Of being joint heirs with Christ. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come of which we speak. Verse 6. But one in a certain place talking about David. Psalms 8. Testifying saying. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? 7. It says thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. And did set him over what? Read it. Read it. It's in your Bible. And you set him where? Is it in your Bible? Did he say the man grew there? He said God set him. That is an appointment. God set him and said come. I set you over everything I have created. Tapo satabariakata. He said, God set him over the works of his hand. God says, the jurisdiction of your rulership is everything that came from my hand. So long as I am the one who created it, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm, I bring, I pray. get what I'm preaching. Are you getting me tonight? You must get this as a revelation. So what did God create? Start naming them. One to go. Name them. You are laughing. What did God create? Because the Bible tells us that he put all of those things in subjection to man. The atmosphere. The animals. Weather. Territories. Land. The resources in the deep. He said God has placed man. He brought all of these things in subjection to man. That is the reward you get for being the bride 
of the owner of the whole world. Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. Now you have become his bride. And he says, look, I put all things under your subjection. I put all things. You people name everything God created. You didn't name them all. Satan. Demons. The fallen angels. He said, I put them in subjection. Principalities. Spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. I put them in submission. Let's read on. Now watch this. He says, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He did what? He said he left. Come on, read it. It's in your Bible. That means God didn't make any mistake. That later you say, ah, I forgot to put Satan under your feet. No. He said God was thorough. He made no mistake. He put all things. All things. God is not scratching his head saying, what kind of costly mistake did I make? The bride, the bride, the eve of this second Adam. Do you realize that even when it comes to calling Jesus back to the earth, it is the spirit and the bride that says come. The spirit alongside with the bride called their husband and say come. The spirit and the bride say come. I give you the highest. Oh, I'm not ordinary. I'm not ordinary. I give you the loudest. Loudest praise to the King. I lift my holy hands. Highest praise to the King. I give you. I give you. Help me. The highest praise. I give you. Lord, we give you praise for what you have done for us. Give you the highest. Listen. I give you. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Watch this. I need to deliver us from a Christianity that allows every and anything to happen around us. The Bible says. God has brought, I, I use this lady to give you something. That means, see, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. He said, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Hear this. He says, then you shall make your way. Who will make it? It's in your Bible. You shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. So, your finances is under your control. Your health under your control. Your life under your control. Your longevity in life under your control. Your victory. It says God put all things under subjection to the man he created. God made no mistake. So everything, listen, listen. The Holy Ghost comes to live in you and directs you to champion the course of your destiny according to the knowledge that is gained from the word of God. And then Jesus came, watch this. Jesus came. Listen, let me tell you the implication of the coming of Jesus. Do you realize that Jesus came and acted the part of the woman for you to watch. He came and became what he wants you to be. Walked upon the earth. Showed you victory over sickness. Victory over everything. Unconditional love. They wanted to throw him from a cliff. He walked through them. 
night conquered death. They were looking for money. He was stranded. He said, go to the fish. I am convinced that the money came at the mouth the moment he spoke. He said, I am so powerful. I can use anything. Go to that fish. Bring out a coin. In John 21, listen, when he resurrected in John 21, the Bible says the disciples were struggling to catch fish. There was no fish. At his word, they caught fish and the net was about to sink. The Bible says Peter wore his clothes and ran and he came and met Jesus already roasting fish. Where did he get his own from? He said to no angel. Listen, I will tell you why he said to no angel. Do you realize that Lucifer was a fallen angel? Do you realize that the angels of God are loyal? Satan as a fallen angel is claiming ownership and God is saying let me inform you I did not give any angel any angel the earth so any angelic being in heaven or in the earth that claims ownership of the earth is doing it illegally it says to no angel did he ever say that he will be a partaker he did not put the world under the subjection of any angel The secret of victory in life is to accept by faith. Are you listening to me? That you are supernatural. Because you are the bride of Christ. You have come into oneness. We are partakers. I am a partaker. See, that's why my life will keep soaring from glory to glory. It's not because my name is Joshua Selman. I understand the implication of what it means to be one with Christ. Take me anywhere. I know the end. Glory. Glory. The glory of God. Hear me. So when you understand this, there is nothing in the kingdom called disadvantage. Cancel it out of your life. Quickly. Yeah. What then is the basis of saying you are disadvantaged? Are you listening to me? It doesn't matter what situation. You know you are victorious. Because you are the bride of Christ. When Jesus faced situations, he didn't cry and wail and do as if he didn't have anything to do about it the bible says even jesus knew what to do he knew what to do hallelujah when they met him with a hard question they said this woman was called caught in adultery and moses wrote in his law that if a woman be caught in adultery she should be stoned so what do you have to say suddenly he tapped from the bank of the wisdom of the spirit and he simply answered them he says he who does not have sin among you should cast the first stone the bible says they were convicted from their heart and they threw back the stone from the oldest it's beautiful that he started from the oldest because he was matured enough to have that common sense from the oldest down to the youngest and he looked at the woman and said woman where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn thee go and sin no more Do you believe that you are one with Christ? Do you believe it? The times that are coming will test that revelation. Hallelujah. Now, from the story I gave here, watch this. From the story I gave here, how did she demonstrate her oneness? How did she demonstrate her oneness? My wife in this example hallelujah number one she came into terms with it is that correct number two she began to announce it using the marriage certificate as the basis are you following me now that's when you come into that the first revelation is to accept it accept that in christ is your inheritance to live a prosperous life many of us do not believe that this is possible 
Oh, not in Nigeria. Who told you? It's possible to live in divine health. It's not just possible. It's your heritage. It's not a product of fasting and prayer. It's God's present day gift for you as being his bride. The only limit you have in Christ is the limit that Jesus too has. His limit becomes your limit. That's the reason why, listen. Watch this. Every time God speaks to you, he speaks to you from his realm of ability and reality. God can look at you and say, Mos um, he says, Moses, tell the people to move forward. Was God stupid? Was he not seeing the Red Sea? He said, Moses, tell them to move forward. You do not know the person you are in partnership with. Ask them to move forward. When Joshua was afraid, he said, Joshua, be strong. As I was with Moses, I am with you. Be strong and of good courage. Every time God is about to set you on assignment, he reminds you that you are not alone. This is the secret of great men. This is the secret of generals. They came to a point where they, they got a revelation. Every time I pray for the sick, the Lord taught me this. That's why many times I take a while before I start ministering. I'm coming into that alignment that I am not alone. I'm not alone. So I sing songs that reminds me of his presence. Look at what God is doing in this ministry. Does it not tell you that these are not the works of a man? What kind of intelligence can make a young man or young people to do this? Doesn't it tell you that it looks like there is a bigger person? Young Cho says the Holy Spirit, my senior partner. And with the ministry and oneness with that senior partner, he produced the largest church in the world till date an ordinary Korean that does not even understand English very well. So it's not about oratory that Americans teach how to do this. Seven steps to do this. Stories. If you are not in your oneness with him, you will be shocked. Are you understanding this? Tonight I'm here to provoke you and then we'll pray that you are one with Christ. So as you're writing your test and writing your exams, you are one with Christ. You are one with Christ. You are one with Christ. That's why the sister could get her, her job out of over 500 or 200 people. See, when you see some people blessed for no reason, stop looking at them. Look at the person they are in unity with. See, listen. Let me tell you the implication of coming into oneness with someone. When David became king in Israel, he said, Is there any man in Saul's house that I may show him kindness? Who was brought? They brought a cripple called Mephibosheth. Hey. Mephibosheth sat at the royal table, although he was crippled, because he was called by the king. Mephibosheth was called and he was honored. The same food the king ate, he ate. Hallelujah. That's why you can see a man who does not speak good English, but God is still using him. You can see a man who is not fine, he's not handsome, it doesn't matter. Demons still cry out because it's not about your looks, it's about your oneness. 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 In many African countries, they don't preach in English. They cast out devils in their local dialects. The devils have never argued that they don't understand the language. Never. I am one with Christ. His supernatural life lives in me. Are you following me now? So you are not weak. Many of you are waiting until the day you become a man or a woman of God. No. This revelation has an implication. There is nothing I would do in this life that I will not emerge at the top. It sounds like pride. 
but I'll be lying if I don't tell you this. It's not because of me. There is no project by the grace of God. All from the time he and I started, there is nothing we have laid our hands to do that we did not accomplish. Not because we are great men. Are you listening to me? Because we have a great husband. So you can walk in divine health. Why? I am one with him. His life lives in me. That no demon can come and disturb you. Listen. Can I challenge you friends? Get angry and solve this issue of demons once and for all in your life. Hear me. It was not designed to be a struggle. There's no demon that has threatened Jesus from his throne in heaven. Are you listening to me? When you are entering a car to travel, be conscious of the fact that he is with you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There are deaths happening everywhere. I'm sure you have been getting reports of people dying and all of this. I feel very sad and grieved in my heart. And we pray that God will keep these people. But now that you are alive, do you believe your life is by chance I'm challenging you tonight do you realize there is nothing called chance in the realm of the spirit everything happens as a result of cause and effect you are not gathered today by chance are you listening to me it is not by chance Jesus did not become Lord of all by chance you don't become healthy by chance. Are you listening to me? You don't become prosperous by chance. You don't become anointed by chance. It's by light. The illumination of the word of God engrafted in your spirit. You don't speak to Satan and say, Satan, leave. And then he leaves by chance. There is no chance about it. Am I convincing you? Get angry and believe this. So if you are to advance in your life, it's not going to be by chance. Satan is not invading this world by chance. Channel O is not taking over by chance. Are you listening to me? MTV is not moving by chance. What's the name of this Nigerian rapper that's those guys that sing all kinds of of songs that you cannot even resist buying the album they sing rubbish and nonsense is that called chance some of them slept in graves for days received powers and anointings came back wrote nonsense on tapes and there is a force moving men beyond their control come on nothing happens in life by chance success is not by chance long life is not by chance all the people in the early days of the bible live long not by chance and he slept with his fathers and he lived a good old age and slept with his father and he lived a good old age and slept with his father we travel all the time i have never feared death in my life are you listening to me why we live in a hostile environment we preach and we walk among people all kinds of people i've gone to yola i've gone to maiduguri i went to maiduguri on road i missed my flight i went on road on a friday and we started the journey in the afternoon You need the word of God to come alive in your spirit. I am convinced that no man can kill me until my assignment is over. This is a revelation I have given to myself. If it were death, I would have died since. Are you listening to me? You don't know the story of my life. If you know the story of my life, you will know that the word of God is not a mistake. I was diagnosed of fungal infection. My head was literally rotten. Are you listening to me? 
my mother is alive I have classmates you can ask them there was no drug that was used on me everything the doctors were tired I moved from teaching hospital to teaching hospital I've seen the power of God if you live your life to chance you will die a beggar in this life there's no chance in this life everything happens as a definite operation of God's principles. I've been hit by a car. Are you listening to me? I've met with armed robbers on the road. I have met demons. What has happened again? All kinds of things. My eyes, my eyes, I have been, that demons have oppressed me. Oh, demons oppressed me for a long time in my life. And today we keep soaring as if Satan does not exist. We live and we move, we plan our activities with no room for Satan. You think it's Satan's will for you to be hearing this word and to be building yourself in grace? See, Paul said we make our boast in the Lord. The problem is, there is no other way to communicate this without sounding like you are boasting. I'll never be poor in this life. Never. It's not a confession. It's a present. It's this, I will never, the same way I can never be a woman. That's the exact same way. Never. I can never be a failure in this life. Please don't take it for pride. I am speaking on account of the revelation of my oneness with Christ. You don't need to travel to Dubai or Hawaii for greener pastures. That's nonsense. The Bible says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down. He didn't mention the name of any country in this world. In green pastures. Green pastures is a spiritual location where the word of God gains consistent fruitfulness in your life. Hi. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Are you following me now? Jacob went to the house of Laban. Suddenly, Laban began to prosper and this was his testimony. He said, I come to terms with the fact that I have been blessed for your sake. When the Ark of the Covenant was being restored, it was temporarily kept in Obededom's house. And within that period, Obededom flourished. Listen, kill all of the excuses and all of the things you are putting and take charge from tonight. Take charge because the earth has been given unto you. Your finances will not grow a miracle and change one day. Your health will not change one day. Demons will not just come. Are you listening to me? Things will begin to change the day that you receive as an act of humility what Christ has done for you. Everywhere you take me, the grace of God will distinguish me. It's not because of me. Esther was scattered among many women, but something separated her. Are you listening to me? Do you believe what I'm teaching tonight? It must have an implication in your life. So you expect the blessings that come to your life on account of your oneness with Christ. Everywhere I go to becomes the Garden of Eden. Why the Garden of Eden? Because that's, that was where God designed for man in the first place. And the Holy Spirit leads you. Your life becomes beauty and glory. Do you believe this? So it is within your power to change your finances. Are you hearing me? Don't say I'm young. Don't say I'm old. It's within your power to stop demons from oppressing your life. It's within your power to speak and expect a manifestation in your life. If I bless you, sir, honestly, with all humility, you are blessed. You will see it in your life. 
Hallelujah. So your life is supposed to have prophetic implication that anywhere you are, something is about to happen. Let me use the words of Paula Defarasen. That everywhere you go, something is about to Everywhere Jesus went to, you knew that just give a little time, you will hear that something has happened there. He, he, he always, there was a prophetic implication. So anywhere God takes you, because you are one with him, there should be a prophetic implication of your presence. He takes me into a wilderness. I turn that wilderness into a fruitful vine. And I turn that fruitful vine into a forest. Mission accomplished. He takes me to the valley of the shadow of death where there are dry bones. I turn every dry bone into an exceeding great army. Mission accomplished. The Bible says that weak and beggarly men were brought to the cave of Adullam where David was. And David turned those people into mighty warriors. To the time to a point where David said, oh, that I would drink of the pool of Bethlehem. And the Bible says three of those men killed all the armies and went and fetched water and brought for David. He said the men were mighty. They fought with swords and their hands cleaved to the sword. It will not fall. Mastery. You can turn anybody. That's why I don't care who you are. When you sit under this anointing, there is transformation. Your life must change. Because of the prophetic implication of the presence of God. Great men and women like Catherine Kuhlman, William Branham, they understood their oneness and the prophetic implication was across their communities. Hallelujah. And so you speak over your life and you declare. You may look ordinary, but not when you begin to speak. When you begin to speak and declare that I am blessed. Oh, I'm blessed in the city. Blessed in the country. I see no limits. The hand of God is upon me. I see no limitations in my life. The strength of God is at work in me. No weakness. The Bible says none was weak. None was feeble. All through their road in the wilderness. None was sick. None was feeble. Their clothes grew with them. Joint heirs. Joint heirs. Say after me, I'm an heir of God. And a joint heir with Christ. Say I'm a joint heir with Christ. I partake in royalty. I partake in dominion. I partake in prosperity. I partake in divine health. Yes. Yes, you must prophesy this. This must become your confession. On account of what Christ has done. Hallelujah. You must be open to prophecy. And to visions. Why? The testimony of Jesus. Is the spirit of prophecy. And the Holy Spirit is the one who testifies about Jesus. And he lives in you. He is the spirit of prophecy. Quickened in your inner man. And so you can see him. So you can hear. Don't say I can't hear the voice of God. My sheep hear my voice. You plot evil against me. You are only going to frustrate yourself. Because I will climb you and your, your plant and just walk. He prepares a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. The testimony will keep being from glory to glory from glory to glory oh yes from glory to glory you will never hear about a worse tomorrow it's from glory to glory are you listening to me that whatever challenge you face in the midst of that challenge you stamp it and you keep smiling as if you are not seeing anything I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in his grace. I believe in who Jesus is. I believe in my oneness with him. Hallelujah. A gentleman here, some groups of young men, I think they were in the occult or something. They used to come for koinonia. Right from when they were in that occultic thing. 
And so they came and they were confessing to me. Can I be honest with you? I wasn't even interested in what they were saying. I was going to have a meeting soon. It wasn't an issue. Whatever the plan is, the Bible says a thousand shall fall by your side. Ten thousand. See, it's a different thing if I have not faced some of these things and I'm talking. Then it's easy to say he's shouting. Let me tell you, there are few things you have faced in life that I have not faced. I tell you with all humility. If it's financial stress, we have faced it. Are you listening to me? I am not married, but we have enjoyed the burden of being real fathers. In terms of the financial implication on people, in terms of the psychological implication, I know that the word of God works. You must convince yourself and stop arguing it. There are many of you that it has not yet become a reality. It's easy to jump in church and to talk. That you tell yourself, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I am a partaker of his divine nature. If he is a king, then I am a king. There is no true king without authority. Hallelujah. And what you see the Lord doing in our midst is the awe-inspiring hand of God. His signature that truly shows that he is the husband of the bride. That's why we give him all the glory. That's why there's no reason to brag and make noise. But I cannot but tell you, this is the truth. This is your heritage in Christ. That when you come into the revelation of your oneness with Christ, it doesn't matter whether you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You can change things. Stop saying things will change. Start changing them. One day, in the sweet by and by, things will be better. When? Our parents said this from the days of their youth. Oh, things will change, I know. Since when you were crawling, things will change. Things will change. Now you're almost getting married, things will change. And what your father didn't tell you, he's now telling you. He's saying, thank God you are now a man. You will change the things. hallelujah I find it very difficult teaching on things like this because the only way to teach about this is to it sounds like you're bragging about it but there's no other way to express it in that truth are you listening to me it's just like looking at your friends and saying I am married you know sometimes you can feel am I hurting them but is it a lie Or that they made your father a senator. And you say, my daddy just became a senator. Some things, as painful as it is to convey them, they are the truth. Jesus said, before your father Abraham, I am. It wasn't a lie. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. How about Jesus? He will see people who were older than him. And he was saying, my little children. <laughs> see, see. I hope you realize that everybody, the disciples that were older than Jesus were older than him by more than two years because all his colleagues two years and below were killed when he was small so peter peter was married because jesus healed his mother-in-law so peter he was rebuking satan out of peter and he called them little children a man who was born in their presence this is what pain the people they say is this not joseph's son enough is enough you this small boy just like they look at us and speak and say how can a small boy like you say you are prophesying to people paul said i am what i am by the grace of god i am what i am in as much as we try to be humble he has anointed us we cannot deny it as much as we try i am blessed I am victorious is the truth from God's standpoint. We are a blessed people. 
accept it and give him glory for it we are dressing nice let God be praised hallelujah it is because of what Christ has done I apologize if we sound proud are you listening to me but I'm challenging you it is what he gave us he gave us it's an inheritance in Christ that's why the worshippers minister like angels they minister with the revelation that they are one that's why the media keep moving from glory to glory it's not by chance that's why the ushers keep moving by from grace to grace see listen that's why we will keep getting sinners saved sinners will keep coming and they'll keep getting born again no devil will stop them because it's the authority of christ that is in motion are you listening to me for four years we kept meeting while on campus many people will come in the night for four years some of you never slept between sunday and monday in the rain in the sun no chair no seat no balloon no poster how can you explain that people criticize us of doing jazz they criticize us of doing everything they still say it till today till tomorrow people hear of the miracles and they talk did that leg really grow did that hand grow did the ss change see in christ you are a wonder you are a sign and a wonder are you listening to me in christ when john first stands to prophesy when manasseh prophesies he say how oh, are these people these people have taught something you have robbed something on your rob what rob what hallelujah Many of you are surprised to see how changed and transformed you are. You gave up on yourself, but see what God has done in your life today. It is a product. I'm challenging you. From tonight, realize that you are a partaker of his royalty. You are not weak. You are not beggarly. You have the power to bless. You have the power to call for things that be not as though they were. Create a future out of the word of God. Your words have prophetic implications. Speak as the bride of Christ that you are. Hallelujah. I say it with all humility. Ask all the leaders. From the time we started Koinonia, by the grace of God and to the glory of the Father above, we have never had a meeting. Ask them. Never had a meeting to discuss and say, where will we get the money for this week? No. Hallelujah. Where is it coming from? Have we ever come to rob your house? Did you ever see me with something on my face? And I say, man, I say, through the fence, this way. Every Thursday night. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. You are one with Christ. His ability flows through you. His wisdom flows through you. I can never meet a challenge in my life. Give me time, I will solve it. Give me time. I will disengage my wisdom and tap into a higher wisdom. Take me anywhere. It doesn't matter what the limitations are. There is an ability in me. I have knowledge. Epignosis is the knowledge of the spirit beyond my age, beyond my level of experience, beyond my exposure. When I speak to you, I engage the ability of the spirit. If I bless you, you are blessed. Hear me. It's not because my name is Joshua Selman. That is your heritage in Christ. That is your heritage in Christ. You can bless. You can speak. Prophesy. You're tired of sickness. Tell yourself, I refuse sickness. I refuse it. Stop giving excuses for it. Every time you have ideas and projects 
nothing is coming in your head lay hands and say i engage the ability of the spirit bigger than my own you are in class and a cause is threatening you get angry many of you are afraid of your exams there are sicknesses that come when you are about to write your exam many of you have already bought all the drugs you have arranged them many of you are already worried now where will i get the money to buy provisions during exams and you have started thinking you have you have been typing text for three days hiding it in your draft about the kind of lie you will give your parents to send you money you say ah my father knows i used this one last time where will you change and believe the word of god let god be true and let every man be a liar do you not believe that god can move men to bless you hallelujah your roommate is complaining every time she has epilepsy she has epilepsy every time you come you lay your hands and say how is your epilepsy don't just laugh about it we are going to pray i'm challenging you god will never take responsibility for your future to the degree that you should take it his responsibility is to watch over his word to perform it Kenneth Hagin please let me have someone come just say yes, sir Kenneth Hagin go and read his book I believe in visions this was his encounter Jesus was speaking to him just stand there Jesus was speaking to him are you listening to me and suddenly a demon came in between them and the demon began to jump and Jesus kept speaking can you imagine how can a demon come to insult the king of kings and the lord of lords Jesus kept speaking and he wasn't hearing Jesus because the demon was shouting and making noise at a point Kenneth E. Hagin he was angry he felt embarrassed how can Jesus Christ the one who died and rose again he's speaking and a demon is jumping and at a point by divine illumination Kenneth Hagin looked at the demon and said I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and the demon disappeared and left hear what Jesus told him he said if you did not do anything about it there is nothing I would have done oh God when will you change my life the day you accept the fact that you are one with Christ and begin to take your rightful place in Christ hallelujah this is one of the blessings of prayer because it offers you the opportunity to speak to Hagar to declare the Bible says Job 22 verse 28 it says and thou shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee it said where the word of a king is there is power words have prophetic implications i don't waste my words because i realize they carry power are you listening to me true believers are not noise makers they understand the prophetic implication of their words the bible says do not say before an angel i made a mistake because their job is to accomplish the words that are spoken by the saints we are going to pray and make some decrees over our lives are you listening to me from today realize that you are ruling and you are reigning with Christ say after me I am royalty I am one with Christ my presence has prophetic implications yes when you come into a room your roommates should start dancing and rejoicing there are some people you can do anything to be roommates with you can pay for the room and say come somehow you know that their presence carry prophetic implication look at how they sought after jesus christ they just wanted his presence in a place because his presence carried prophetic implications every time i go to a house or i go everywhere i am conscious of his presence and so when i step in and sit down i know that the king of glory is sitting as i speak I am his ambassador i am his bride he is committed to back me up jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 
He says amplified. He says that God is alert and active watching over his word to perform it. Hallelujah. There are implications of being a joint heir with Christ. That you have the righteousness of Christ and you are the righteousness of Christ. Say after me, I am the righteousness of Christ. Above condemnation. Above guilt. Yes. This is God's present reality. Above guilt. Satan cannot look at Paul and say, Saul, you used to persecute the church. Paul was so free of guilt that he could say his testimony and go and sleep about it. He said, I, Paul, used to persecute the church. And he didn't feel bad about it. He went and slept. The greatest proof that you have conquered an issue is that you can talk about it freely. Are you listening to me? Divine health is your heritage. It's your heritage in Christ. I emphasize divine health from your mind, from your spirit. Are you listening to me? You have headache when you are writing exams. Someone, I heard someone gave a testimony some weeks ago that I used to sleep in the exam hall. Many of you don't sleep. You have all kinds of pills in your house. You have to take five or six. You are less than 25. You are already taking pills as if you are 70 years. While the Bible says the age, their age will be like the age of a tree. Hallelujah. I'm not against medication. Don't, don't take me wrong. I'm only challenging you not to be complacent over things that are taking the place of the word of God in your life. Are you listening to me? You are doing your project and there's no idea. Your lecturer calls you dull. Say, Holy Spirit, I may be dull in myself, but let's work together and shock this man. Let him know there is a wisdom. He said, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your enemies will not be able to resist nor gain say. You are going for your defense, you are fidgeting. The Bible says when you stand before them, you shall not be afraid of what to say. For in that very same hour, it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father. Hallelujah. When you stretch your hands to bless a man, they look ordinary. You just add a bar with it, yes. But it has prophetic implications. That when you lay your hands upon this lady and say, sweetheart, you are blessed. Suddenly, the heavens, remember the meeting last week, the heavens begin to shift and to change. To accommodate what you have spoken. Hallelujah. There are things in our lives that we have left the responsibility for God. Every day I keep speaking. I say I'm established as a man. I'm established. If you're waiting for your job to establish you, be sure you'll be established at age 50. I've said it here. Let me challenge the guys before we pray. How much is one block? Have you asked? How much is one block? How much? Eh? 200? 110 naira. How many of them do you, how much is the salary you will collect net? Aside from tithe and your parents and all that. The moment you get a job, the hands that are waiting to receive the salary will run you in deficit. Your father, your mother, all the people that you are going to bless. And those people, you will bless them legitimately. Hallelujah. Marriage right now is like a building project. You build foundation and then you breathe in. You rest. And then when these people that carry scaffold for building, there's something they say, oh, hey, hey. and then they say, oh yeah, let's go. And then they move. <laughs> Except God helps you. Except you come into alignment. Do you realize the prophetic implication of creating your future by speaking? This is not about being a Pentecostal. This is God's weapon. Kings reign by their words. 
if it is true that you are a partaker of God's divine nature, then it is your job to begin to paint your destiny in the place of prayer. That's why, see, prayer is not just a ritual to feel spiritual and to fall. It is God's tool for spiritual architecture. You build your life. I don't just allow anything happen in my life and then you say whatever will be, will be. Let me tell you the truth. is what you don't want that will be. When you leave a farm without plowing it, something will grow. What's the name? What did you define with in your primary science? Some of you jump class. What is it called? Unwanted plants. They are plants, but they are unwanted. So tonight I'm challenging you that you are a joint heir with Christ. You must tell yourself, I refuse to die until my assignment is over and I will transit with dignity and honor. Satan will tell you, you are the one that has the big mouth to say this. Every time he tells you, remember the story. Where's Tosin? One more time, please come again. Remember the, all of you look at her so that as you pray, I face every time Satan wants to speak. Remember, the bully in my story is Satan. I'm speaking a parable now. You are not like the disciples of old. You are supposed to ask me to interpret. And then I'll say, The bully is Satan. The husband is the husband, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Although she has been married into royalty. Her lack of knowledge or taking steps in that regard still crippled her. Do you know that every time we accuse God, God feels very bad on the throne because he ever remains faithful. Are you listening to me? You must rise up. The Bible says arise. You must arise before you shine. Arise. Shake off the dust. Tell yourself, the Lord, according to Hebrews 2, has put all things. Where? Where? Where is Satan? Where is poverty? Where is sickness? Where is failure? You must believe it. Don't just say, Kai, this koinonia, we are behaving like children. You, you better take it seriously. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Come on, just pray in the spirit for a while. Pray in the spirit for a while. Walk around. Walk around. Come on. Walk around. Come on. Katali ba kore ba shatali ba di di ba us sobre di ba le pa le ko pa di ya ba katala ba do bre di ba shatada le ba ka po sa si ka katada ba en kre ke te ba ke she ke le ba pare katali ba kore ba di ke ba us da da bre in the spirit charge up your spirit man because we are about to prophesy we are about to decree we are about to establish Come on, walk around. Walk around. Pray. All things. She has put all things in subjection. All things. Poverty. Failure. My prosperity is under my control. My destiny. She parabados, 
Hallelujah. Listen. All of you listen, please. Let me teach you how to change things in life. Let me teach you how to change things. Many of you don't know how to change things in the spirit. Let me teach you. It's not just about blindly praying in tongues. Let me teach you something. Do you know what the Bible calls Yazar? The power of creative imagination. Are you listening to me? Every time you are praying in tongues and you are praying to the end that you want to establish something in the spirit. Are you listening to me? As you are praying in tongues, employ the power of prophetic imagination. Put that limitation before your eyes. Are you listening to me? And pray squarely like a priest. If you are speaking against health or sickness, see it. See yourself rising in health. Are you listening to me? And then you will begin to be conformed to what you are seeing. If you are speaking about your finances, begin to see the new you walking in finances, in grace, in glory. Don't just pray blindly and allow your mind to roam around. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Shepherd, <laughs> Come on, pray. Pray in the spirit. Charge your spirit, man. Because we are about to prophesy. We are about to decree. We are about to establish. All things. All things. Under his control. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. One more time, let me read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 8. Thou hast put all things. Pick up your Bible. Because you are going to personalize it. I am in control. No matter how things get. I am in control. I am in control. Yes. 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 You are not out of control. Say I am in control. No matter how bad things are. I am in control. I am in control. You're not see. Listen, listen. Hold on. Hold on, please. Hold on. I know we like saying God is in control. Hallelujah. That is right. But now, when you say I am in control, you are not replacing God. Are you listening to me? What you are saying is that, look, as a king, no matter what it is, it's not enough to make me stand up from my throne. I am in control. The whole earth is still in chaos. Jesus is still seated on the throne. Are you listening to me? We are going to read the A part of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 8. Hallelujah. We are going to read it up to the part that it says, He left nothing that is not put under him. Everywhere there is him, you are going to put your name. Not me. Me is not your name. Are you listening to me? Are you ready now? One to read verse 8. 
thou hast put all things in subjection to Joshua Selman's feet. For in that you put all things under Joshua Selman, you left nothing that is not put under him. Listen. How many things are within your control? Listen. The word under your feet simply is a prophetic language. It was an ancient language that meant you are in control. How many things are you in control of? Your finances. Your health. Now you are going to prophesy. Are you listening to me? You're, listen. You are going to prophesy in the name of the one that you are in oneness with. Begin to call forth your health, your finances, wisdom. Prophesy. I am in control. I am in control in the name of Jesus. I am in control of my environment, of everything that happens around me. Hallelujah. I am in control. I refuse to be sick. I am a sickness. I refuse poverty. I am in control. In the name of Jesus. My presence carries a prophetic implication. Prophesy. Prophesy. I call for finances. In the name of Jesus, wisdom, 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 the spirit of revelation, insight, power, advancement. I am well favored. I am honored. Oh, hallelujah. I am the head, not the tail. I not believe. not believe. Above, not believe. Above, not believe. Above, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I am not weak and beggarly. He has called me one of his Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, many of you, on account of your oneness with Christ, you have suffered, literally. Why will you not be glorified on account of your oneness with Christ? Many of you, on account of your oneness, you have been criticized. On account of your oneness, you have experienced it. Why will you not be honored on account of your oneness? We like suffering for Christ. We run away from being honored by Christ, for Christ, and with Christ. Hallelujah. Now, you're going to speak to things. Listen. You are not praying to God. Are you listening to me? You are wearing your kingly crown. And you're going to begin to decree. The Bible says in Job 22, 28. And thou shalt decree a thing. And it shall be established. Listen. He told Job, he said, Job, has thou commanded thy morning? Have you spoken to the atmosphere to respond according to the word of God? The Bible says, the Lord stands in the congregation of the mighty. And then he begins to speak from there. We are going to decree, listen. You are going to give boundaries to everything called evil in your life. Are you listening to me? 
you're going to draw a line the bible says oppression shall be far from thee it is within your power to speak now is not the time to stare at your neighbor now is the time to speak tell yourself death you are under my feet failure sickness prophesy for yourself for your family for your family no death no sickness prophesy your words have prophetic implications speak to the atmosphere impregnate the womb of the morning let the atmosphere be pregnant with the words that you speak your words have prophetic implications Make sure you are praying. I'm about sickness. I'm about failure. I'm about death. I refuse to die. Ever increasing glory. Ever increasing grace. Ever increasing grace. Ever increasing finances. Ever increasing health. Ever increasing honor. Ever increasing wisdom, prophesy, son of man, prophesy, son of man, prophesy, prophesy, prophesy to the heaven, prophesy, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Are you ready to speak over your exams? Now that you know who you are. Are you ready to prophesy? Listen. Listen. You're going to call all your courses one by one. Are you listening to me? One by one. And declare. And say open up unto me open up listen you're going to receive wisdom insight favor come on begin to pray prophesy the time has come arise the time has come prophesy prophesy call yourself the head not the tail prophesy you are both. You are both. You are both. Prophesy. No missing script. No missing script. Prophesy. No victimization. No victimization. Prophesy. Favor. Favor. In every cause. Favor. Favor for you. Prophesy. The words have prophetic implications. Prophesy a makeup test. Makeup test. Prophesy. Prophesy. You are king. Your king will back you.
Hallelujah. Please pay attention. The meeting is on. I'm seeing ministering spirits. It's a class of angels. I'm seeing them walk inside and outside. Just let me do what is happening. Ministering spirits. There are not many times I see these kinds of angels. I'm seeing them walking inside and outside. Ministering spirits. They are angels that impart strange levels of graces. Ah, ah, yeah. They will touch you where you are. It will be like fire. They will touch you where you are. As they touch you, they release your miracles. As they touch you, they release your breakthroughs as they touch you they break those chains nah. they are touching you on behalf of families touching you on behalf of families skatapakatabara <laughs> direction that's what i hear god is giving men direction it's like an anointing it will come on you outside and inside direction and end to that confusion right now it's coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now for marriage direction 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 for way to settle down geographic location direction is coming by the holy ghost direction somebody is praying and say lord show me the lord is saying i am showing you is coming upon your spirit i'm giving you direction on what to do direction hallelujah i'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone and the lord is saying take it out lord where are those people whose destinies have been buried as i'm speaking right now inside and outside right now right now as i speak by the power of the holy spirit 
right now where you are sitting you will receive a visitation i pull it out this is a miracle service i pull it out now oh yes release that lady i see it in the spirit release that lady right now release that lady's destiny something is happening to you where you are something is happening to you where you are begin to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside Lord we receive what you are doing sit down if you can those under the anointing just leave them John 3 16 I just want to The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they, when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing a name like augustina augustina there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as is happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow the anointing of the spirit is touching 
somebody outside the Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft it has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah I'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family God wants me to minister to you are five five people I don't know if there is a mother I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all Please, when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son please listen don't worry about what is happening just let me have your attention please he says he gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now Please help her wrap her I command that spirit to leave her right now now and never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of Jesus the Christ hallelujah so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for God so loved the world. The word there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. He says for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything 
the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of jesus christ and then the bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said repent the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister to you. are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins so the bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today, in heaven, if you know it, just sing it with me. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am I will love you. You are the only one that for me gave your life. Hallelujah. So he gave like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money he gave he donated and jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things listen jesus did not just come please i want you to pay attention it's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray jesus did not just come to show us how god looked alone he came to show us how we should look so when he walked upon the earth he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created he was invincible the Bible records above situations above circumstance with unlimited power yet a man of extreme self-control he knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet there would be so many sick people like the ten lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 i can of my own do nothing as i see my father do so he came to show us the prototype of the true christian life a life that is completely yielded to the will of the father void of self-ambition void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of christ a life that is crucified with christ 
Are we together now? And then the Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself. And then the Bible says he went to Gethsemane and there he cried. He prayed until tears were like drops of blood. Afterwards, he was ready to be crucified. And brothers and sisters, I know that we celebrate Easter today is Good Friday. Pain is what made today good. Are we together? Sacrifice is what made today good. If he refused to lay down his life. Listen, when Pilate looked at him and said, don't you know I have the power to free you? He said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said i have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words i was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about good friday but we never know what made it good this is what made it good that a man gave his son then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all-wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless, I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood. He gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen, listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray. Right? He said every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair, please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment, please. At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well, all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. They're all looking at me. Um, sit down. Especially this, my friend. Friend, how are you? What's his name? Aaron. Kelvin. Just get somewhere. That they can sit around. And I'll attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir i offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said, I hope you are watching. See, if two people come and they tell you they love you, the best answer to give those two people is, I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? 
I am what? All kinds of things have told you they love you, but they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First, stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him, he gave his health. The father gave him, he gave his prosperity. The father gave him, when we say his life, let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? The ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases. The father gave him. He gave it away. In exchange. The Bible says he was rich. But he gave it. Are we together now? He had a reputation of dominion. But he laid it aside. I hope you know. That they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies. A 33 year old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still will not be able to take it. See, listen, if you think what happened on the cross is what Jesus just died for, physically, you will be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified. What he stopped you from was not the physical activity. It was what was happening in the spirit. You can do the physical one. I guarantee you people have been crucified, but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross and they nailed him, as his blood began to drip upon the earth, and in that excruciating pain, it was a way of torturing criminals. He was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. He was looking at every witchcraft in our family. And every ordinance of darkness. And he said, if it's for you, I will do it. But he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight. Three words that represented victory. It is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings Having to atone for your sins by your own strength. I brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God. He said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation. My own access. Like I organize a program. And I invite someone. And while you are about to drive him. I say no, no, no. That's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest. 
he also made you the one to be celebrated please listen there is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what i want to teach us when jesus went to hell and met satan a discussion transpired and satan said remember adam and he said i don't remember adam i am him don't you see this is adam and satan knew it was true because only adam had the right to collect the key no other man could collect the key and so he went as the second adam and said you killed adam and every man that came from him let me have the keys revelations 1 verse 1 when you read downwards i am he that was dead but now i am alive and i hold the keys he collected the keys listen access to the earth access to dominion access to god's life that's the most important part the life of god i'm going to explain it when he resurrected watch this did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven it would just be that he was victorious and then the bible says according to the book of hebrews that he went to heaven as the high priest the lamb the sacrifice as everything and then he took his blood poured it upon that tabernacle and said father you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just god your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this i really want you to get a revelation of this it will change your life every time the voice of judgment the voice of mess or of of justice begins to speak i will not fight it but remember that i not only paid the price i paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path are we together now when that happened a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ it's an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we are in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen 
everything I derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would I be found leaning on my own strength because the moment I lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and I abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that I have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believers victory is what Christ did on the cross but not just what Christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh I know what he did no let's continue John 3 verse 16 please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what Jesus did that's not where I'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe Jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe Jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said God no believing in God doesn't give you life who is the him that's where I want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life we believe but what do you believe are we together you can believe the shepherd believe me you will not be saved believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation are we together believe in him who is him the Bible I love the way the Bible puts it as many as believed in him see that brothers and sisters I am many things and all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me are we together a child believes a father a worker believes a CEO a Jimmy's daughter believes in her father she doesn't believe in a CEO we believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye the multi-millionaire that's what you believe you will never get fatherly love from that dimension are we together now you may get financial advice you may get intelligence you may get all of this I believe in professor Femi you will get the intellectual dimension there is a dimension of God you must believe to have life many of us have believed him as a healer you can be healed and still go to hell please hear me many of us have believed him as a savior you can have I mean you can have a what do we call it a, as a shepherd what dimension of him have you believed I will tell you now ready there is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved what is Lord the word Lord means a conqueror are we together now listen please it's not just a savior like the one who died he didn't resurrect as a savior he died as a savior he did not resurrect as a savior he resurrected as Lord a winner a champion one qualified to transfer what he has and the Bible says whoever believed that listen whoever believes in him 
that name that was given he said he shall not perish the word perish there is not the word go to hell are we together because the bible says whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your, your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now thank you don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not one depend on any external impute for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a vague thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i i'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of god is like a programming something enters you and begins to walk in you it is god who is at work in us to will and to do so it's working the moment the life enters you it's like a genetic mutation it starts altering your configuration are we together now and the holy spirit is the custodian of that life when he comes he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses 
you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective. No, I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe, God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. The same way you say, I have a car. The same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill. If you don't have anything, he doesn't come to steal. Are we together now? Satan comes. His first ministry is deception. What is deception? Painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it. So you believe that I do not have this life. If I truly had this life, I should not be sick. Are we together now? If I have this life, I should be doing exploits academically. If I have this life, now listen. Here is where the confusion has come in the body of Christ. There are those who are saying you have this life. There are those who are saying you don't have this life. You better fight your way into receiving it. Both of them are incomplete. On one side, you are seeing the supposed by faith. You believe, you know, you acknowledge that that life is in you. But then you are not seeing the difference the Bible said should be produced. Are we together now? This is the dilemma of many Christians. I gave my life to Christ from the day I got born again. My life has not changed. It's been 10 years. I will tell you why. Eternal life. Is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are god and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like mere men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a curse. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. Because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God. Speakings according to his realm. Of existence but there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word it is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear are we together now Hebrews chapter 2 he put it very beautifully 
he said god had put all things under the subjection of man he said god did not leave anything left but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be i know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in christ the truth is they don't believe it they just know let's fight per day they are the ones who suspect everybody and everything if sam looks at you like this is a sign that is an enemy so they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare and by warfare they mean a consistent never-ending contention both Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh-huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing, you open your heavens. When I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple. But it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life. And all its content is a way, the life of God, that can become any and everything, any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word. And as the word opens up, it shows me the dimensions of its operation. And then I look out first to believe. Number two, to respond. Everybody say believe. Say respond. This is your part as a believer. You, when you respond to what you do not believe, is a waste of time. So the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. 
he's a deceptive person and he will not just because you have life leave you the bible says he left jesus for a season the next time he would come he didn't come directly again he came through peter and jesus said i still detect you and the devil says do not i mean god said do not be unaware speaking through the apostle of the devil's strategy are we listening to me please because many people get up bragging i'm not under any cause i'm not under this christ has redeemed me from the cause of the lord that's not a lie but you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality so you will still brag around and die like mere men are we together now i really believe in jesus christ and i really believe in his word but i also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done there still remains a rest and then it says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push god aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and he says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming and you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond remember during our time of fasting we're showing you different mysteries these are all the components that are called the life of god right he gave you life But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit. So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception. In a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it as a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith... You believed I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction. Waiting for your participation. You got up your faith. He calls it your faith. So what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take. Based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds 
is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, he's standing up. It's a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Ejimi, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me, although he has not seen it. So he's putting my integrity to the line. It's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing. He believed. I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looks for anybody who is greater than him. So that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse... Uh, 32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a christian if you are a child of god this is good friday well even if you are not a child of god read i will soon make an altar call one to read he that spared not stop who is the he now god is trying to make a statement and is tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before it's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something. So in case you doubt what I'm about to do, find out whether I did that thing or not. He's about to make a statement. And he's saying, don't you dare doubt me for what I'm about to say. He that did not spare his what? Own son, but delivered him up. For who? What's the next statement? How shall he not with him also freely give us what? This is God speaking. He said, look at me. Your healing is a lesser thing. I gave Jesus. What is healing? I gave Jesus. What is witchcraft? If I did not, if I spared my son, then you will know that there are some things I can spare. But I carried my son. I gave him and now I have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking God this my this I've been bleeding for six months non-stop and God said if I spared not Jesus I will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself I will do it if it means me killing somebody I will do it I I gave my son who will I not be able to kill Listen, this is the basis for conviction. So every time the devil is trying to say, look, 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 look. Will that prophecy work? Just remember Jesus. Jesus begged the father to have mercy. The father refused. So listen, Jesus said, father, reconsider. The father said, you are joking. Stay there. And now God is saying, I want to bless you. And the devil is saying, no. And Jesus is saying, God is saying, just believe me. And watch how I will do anything it takes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Too hard for me to do. I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the father did not give Jesus, it's like a man 
Listen. It's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife. And the guy said, I'm a just person. And he punished his wife. Then somebody throws a and says, Oh, guy, you know we're Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, That's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen, if it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake, then I assure you, whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray i have a part to play i lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able are you praying sense the anointing of the spirit i like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Yes. 
Shekhar Barada 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 Oh, you must go, you must go in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight, in the name of Jesus, the faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. The Bible says they went to a gate called Beautiful. Please let me sit down, sir. Watch this. It says they saw a man who had been there and he, he, he called on them for arms. And he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, he said, silver and gold have I none. He said, but such as I have. Listen, listen. I give unto you. What did he have? He said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The man was there. Sit down. He was, nothing happened. Why? Response. Did he believe Peter? Yes. Did he get a miracle? No. Why? He, he could not respond. And the Bible says, when Peter saw him, he said, who taught you faith? He held his hand and said, respond. 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 And the Bible says, Peter held his hand and he leaping stood. The power of God is released at the point of response. Not before. Never before. At the point of response. When I began to minister here, the Lord was speaking to my spirit. Who gave me a guarantee that the power of God will move? But as I began to speak, I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen, it was God that put this miracle service. Your leaving your house to come is enough response already. Are you listening to me? You're going to say, Lord, I put pressure on your integrity. You asked us to come, we have come. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be afraid of saying it. Pray. Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two 
run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this easter friday i give everything to you keep coming you are saying lord easter friday you die for god so loved me he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat keep coming hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away You don't have to be afraid No man condemns you The mercy The mercy at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner 
I've been crucified with Christ and I have his life right now Jesus has paid the price I receive his life and I declare that I'm a new creation the old has gone I begin a new journey Satan you no longer have any accusation against me I pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good Friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what Jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you will join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now Christians don't tell lies. Make sure that you write your number, you write your name, just follow the instructions, no fighting. Be patient until it gets to your turn. They'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service. Please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening. God bless you. Every other person begin to pray in the spirit. Rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit. And say, Lord, my time for visitation is here. I won't give up. No, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on until my change comes. Lord, I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of... I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. It's being streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming i i don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me god answers prayers here god gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of hezekiah hallelujah when he took the threat letter and the bible says he put it before the lord and said lord behold their threatenings so please write it very quickly and then ushers let's be very fast please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants you to just let her do 
Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Please quickly. Your loved ones, please make sure the online community participate. There's a God that answers prayers here. Remember we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers, help them. If I were you, I would begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life. Or you must come into my life. Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your request very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in elorin to ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between kwara state and ekiti state and i saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind I was saying Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request 
and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north but we discern that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play it was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying Ejimi. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him sowed the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures i thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing i said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah I, mean, I was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had I said, what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called afe babalola university the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning i saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 i saw the obituary he just died 141 i said i got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating i didn't see any hospital around there i just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of god you are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that i always believed it but now that i've seen it ah there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming we were in the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football i just remember that old woman i said plane you are joking i'm surrounded by too many mysteries 
Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years, still a lecturer. Alive. 100 and something years. You see the women as if they are 50 something. But some of them are in their 90s, 80s, 100s. That's grace, brothers. It's not about anybody praying for longevity. There is an anointing that comes upon territories. And tonight, in the course of the meeting, is when it's time to pray that, please receive it. We need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom. Pray and say, Lord, my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand leave the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shepa baba kata altars 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 right now shake it, 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 it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking 
is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ father we turn go ahead and pray lord my request is turned into a testimony i must testify by the anointing of the holy spirit Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass. 
every single request in this place in the name of Jesus we command the foundations of the earth we command the firmaments we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request we lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of Jesus mighty and everlasting God standing upon your promise to us upon this altar the heavenly portals opened in this place we command a performance of the requests the desires placed here tonight in the name of Jesus we decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of Jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of Jesus an end to demonic oppression it happens now in the name of Jesus blind eyes open deaf ears open destinies moved forward in the name of Jesus satanic burdens removed in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord because speedily according to the seasons of life they receive a performance in the matchless name of Jesus we decree amen father hallelujah hallelujah please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can I saw a spirit and, and I'm praying for the students now please listen when I was outside ministering I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names I pray for everyone here the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the Lord to give you between now and next Friday receive that direction receive that direction I want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of Jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has died in your hands I command it to come back alive in the name of Jesus Christ now I want to pray for you father that old Baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive I pray for you please receive it me too I received it from the depth of my heart Lord you know that I wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of Jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now The force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness, it comes upon your life right now. That spirit that kills people at the prime of their life, when they labor and about to enter, it takes their lives. It leaves your life forever 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 
hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember at that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story I went to collect a loan from the bank. We had done everything. And then when it was now time for them to give me the loan, they embarrassed me. I was humiliated. The same people who were helping me, it was as if a charm came upon them. And I looked at that person. And I vowed that till I die, till I go to be with the Lord, I will not collect loan from anybody living or dead. I made that determination from the depth of my heart. I said, Lord, if you cannot honor me, let me die like that. I pray for someone here. See, listen, if doors are closing against you, it's demonic. Don't ever say it's because I don't know so, so, so. Bad. If, if the person knew me, it's a lie. There is a mantle. The Bible says everyone loved Esther who looked at her. Like a garment, you can wear it. I pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what i'm there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god we put life back to it right now i say it again whatever you started that ended but not by god by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of jesus hallelujah give god praise my goodness i wish we had time i wish we had time dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kate katos kate branda kata pakotos koto breka teke leka ta. The phase of development, Lord.
grant me the discipline 